Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to week number three of our study into how God has made himself available throughout the ages of mankind from the very beginning all the way up until today. Um, so the first lesson we kind of talked about how through uh, from Adam all the way to Noah and then Noah's descendants uh, how word of mouth uh, was able to pass on the knowledge of God uh, largely due to how long people lived where Noah would be able to talk to people about how he learned from Adam from someone that actually knew Adam. And he knew several people uh, that were like that. Um, so the information was not getting corrupted as it went from generation to generation. Uh, whereas a thousand years in the life of humans today with our short lifespans, um, you know, information gets diluted over a thousand years. Where before, when you lived almost a thousand years, the information would not get nearly nearly as diluted um, going from generation to generation. Uh, last week we talked a little bit about what that looked like as we looked at the life of Job and his friends and the knowledge that they had and the understanding that they had. How they had a great understanding and uh, that proves on, on how effective it was as the, as the information was going from generation to generation uh, with the long lifespans uh, that were around during that time. Uh, that we had very learned individuals that, that knew great things about the Word of God, uh, and everybody that had a desire to come to God was always able to have that opportunity. If they desired to come to God, they, they desired to follow God and find His ways, they had the ability to. Uh, so today, we're going we're gonna to kind of set the stage. Uh, so around this time, the nations were, were dividing. They were going throughout the whole world. Um, what we have is we have a chapter in Genesis, chapter 10. It's also known as the Table of Nations, and it goes into detail about the families uh, of Noah. Uh, he had three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, and it goes into the children that they had and where they dispersed throughout the whole world. Um, this is a very unique chapter as far as world history goes. There is no culture in the ancient world that has anything like this at all that is so accurate and the more you look at the table of nations and the dispersion of the nations it's never proven wrong every time we find some information uh, population data um, even DNA now uh, tested in, in DNA um, archaeological archaeological finds um, everything points back to Mesopotamia exactly how the Bible said and when you look at the dispersion and and the societies and the cultures that have developed around the world everybody can trace right back to the descendants Ham Shem and Japheth from the Bible uh, it's, it's a remarkable study and we're gonna we're gonna kind of look into that today so let's kind of talk about Nimrod so First nation that, that, that came around and he consolidated all mankind into one one society one one civilization King Nimrod they would started to build the Tower of Babel uh, and the Bible says that he did this so that the people would not be scattered throughout the world uh, but God's command was to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth um, well they wanted to try to do things their way there were some other things that they were doing wrong idolatry was starting to spread uh, during this time, uh, they, they started uh, ancestor worship was beginning to happen uh, during this time. Um, and people people knew the truth. Uh, they, they did. At this point in time, as far as everyone that had been born in, in Genesis, everybody was still alive. No, no one had died of old age up until this point. Uh, there might have been some people that died from war or unnatural causes, but no one had died of any natural causes up until this point, as far as uh, the record that we have in the Bible from genealogies. No, no one was dying of old age yet. And we see that you know, they would have had the information and, and the knowledge about God, uh, but we see people starting to stray uh, away from the truth. Now, what we also start to see from this time in history forward how sometimes nations would arise and they would try to 
tie in religion to their national, the, the, the state. Uh, they would kind of use religion as a, as a, as a way to uh, obtain and, and keep power. And we see this happening in the Sumerian people as well. Um, if we look at Sumerian religion, so you'll, you may have uh, read, a, read up on the Sumerians or uh, maybe even watched a documentary on them. There, there's, there's a lot of information out there for this society. And if you look at their, at their religious practices, one thing that scientists or archaeologists or historians will say is, you know, the, this, their religion has similarities to uh, Judaism and, and the Christian faith from the Old Testament. And, you know, there's always two ways of looking at something. Now, there's a way that you can look at it in the, in the, in the truth, and then there's a way you can look at it kind of in a worldly way. And the worldly way of looking at this would be, okay, well, this has similarities to the Christian faith and the Old Testament information. So the Old Testament must have come, in from, must have come from this ancient society, since this society came first. But they're missing the whole point. The point is, God has always been, and God has always had his plan, and he is where the truth originated from. And they took some of the truths of God, and by the time it got to the Sumerians, uh, after the flood, and as people started to grow and stray away from the teachings of Noah, they started twisting the truths of God so that they can have their own power and use religion in, in order to, to strengthen their own government and to establish their own power uh, because they're following their own desires. Uh, and we actually see something similar to this happening as, as, as time goes by. We'll fast forward several hundred years in, into the future. Uh, the kingdom of Israel has been established. King David uh, has established the kingdom of Israel. Uh, they're, they're at their heights. Uh, King Solomon has come and he has also uh, reigned and the kingdom of Israel is, is, is rich, they're in prosperity, and they're, they're having some, some phenomenal success uh, that, that God has blessed them with. And then they start to stray. Uh, and the way they strayed from the Lord had caused their kingdom to split. Uh, now when their kingdom did split, the northern kingdom went and the ten tribes of the north became the northern kingdom. Uh, their first king was Jeroboam. Now, what Jeroboam did to maintain power is he stopped the northern kingdom from going to Jerusalem to worship God. And what he ended up doing, even though he knew this was the wrong thing to do, he had two golden calves erected. And then he would tell the northern kingdom, this is the God that led you out of Egypt. Uh, this is how we worship God now. And he completely changed the faith of the northern kingdom, which is a huge stumbling block to the northern kingdom for the rest of their entire existence. They never quite got over that initial stumbling block that King Jeroboam uh, the first set up for them. Um, and he changed the, the religion and the religious practices of the time specifically because he thought that if they worshipped in Jerusalem that they would become reunited as one nation again and then that they would possibly kill him uh, to go back to the old king of, of Judah and become one nation again. So he specifically did that just to maintain power. And we kind of see similar things like that happening right here um, in the ancient kingdom of Sumar under King Nimrod as they were trying to build the Tower of Babel. And God did teach them a lesson. God let them let everybody know in the whole world that had ever lived prior to the flood, uh, they knew that God was the one true God as he did an amazing work and changed the languages of the entire nation. Uh, confused the languages, uh, forcing people to disperse throughout the, the world, uh, to settle new nations, and to do what he told them to do in the beginning, to spread out through the whole earth and, and fill the earth. So what did that look like? What did it look like as the people spread forth uh, to fill the earth? Uh, so we're going to kind of go uh, line by line through the, the sons of Noah uh, and some of, their, uh, some of Noah's grandchildren as well to see, you know, where do these people end up? Okay, so first off, we are going to talk about Shem, Shem's line. Uh, so Shem had some sons. He had Elam, Asher, Arphaxad, Lud, and Aram were the children of Shem. 
And from them uh, came what they call the Semitic people. A Semitic people being from the line of Shem. And also you'll, you, you might have heard of Semitic languages. Uh, this is where they came from. Uh, Elam was one of the sons of Shem and from him the Persians uh, derived. Also the nation of Elam, which uh, you hear a lot about in ancient history. Um, they also mixed with some of the sons of Japheth, uh, Madai. Uh, he became the Medes, and you may have heard of the uh, media, the Persian media empire. Uh, they joined together, and actual uh, Persia today, I Iran, uh, is kind of a mixture between those two, those two groups, uh, among others. And we'll, we'll talk about some of that in here, here in a little bit. Uh, Ashur, from him came the Assyrians. Uh, the Assyrians are also in northern Iraq uh, to this day. Uh, also in parts of Germany, the, as the Assyrian nation dissolved, uh, they kind of went up north and they mixed with some of the sons of Japheth and uh, became part of Germany. Uh, our Faxad, from our Faxad, he's the one that uh, the line of Eber and eventually Abraham came. Uh, from our Faxad, we have the Chaldeans. Now in the, they're uh, in southern Iraq, uh, the Hebrew nation, uh, Israel, and the, the, the Jews. We also have the Arabians and the Bedouins. Uh, now uh, the Moabites, which are the Jordanians or the Palestinians of today. Uh, also the Ammonites and the Edomites came from Arfaxad. Uh, from Lud, we have the Ludim, the Ludians, Lydians, uh, the Chubs. Other related groups uh, right now there are in Asia Minor and North Africa. Uh, for Aram, the, the last son, we have the Mesopotamia came from Aram. Uh, they also became known as Syria and today they are the Lebanese. The next son we're going to talk about is Ham. Uh, one of the sons of Ham was Cush. Uh, and in the, in, in the Old Testament, if you hear the word Cush, it's always associated with one country in particular, and that's Ethiopia. Uh, Ethiopia and, and Cush, the land of Cush, are kind of are used interchangeably. Uh, throughout history, uh, from these people also came the Nubians, the Sudanese, the Ghanaians, the Africans, Bushmen, Pygmies, uh, Australian Aborigines, uh, New Guinea, and, and other related groups. Uh, Nimrod actually came from from uh, Cush, and from him came the Sumerians. Another son of Ham was Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim is a Hebrew word for Egypt, so it literally means Egypt. So one of Ham's sons was Egypt, and from him we get the the Egyptians and the Copts. Uh, he had some sons as well. He had a son named Ludim, and from him comes the Lydia people from Lydia. Uh, Philistines also came from the children of Egypt, the Kashluhim and the uh, Kaphtarhim. Uh, we get the land of Crete. From Ham's son Foot, we get the Libyans, the Cyrenians, the Tunisians, the Berbers, the Somalians, and the North Africans. Uh, his son Canaan, uh, we get the Chinese, the Japanese, uh, Malaysians, American Indians, Eskimos, uh, Polynesians, Pacific Islanders. Okay, so now we're going to talk about a few of the sons of, of, of the Canaanite, uh, some of Canaan's sons. One of his sons was named Sidon. Now Sidon was rooted out of their original lands by a Semitic people. We know that the Israelites came through and displaced many of the Canaanites uh, during their takeover of, of the Promised Land. The people of Sidon, they resettled along the Mediterranean on what is now today is uh, Lebanon. Uh, they had some major cities. One of the cities was Tyre. Uh, these people became well known for trade. Uh, one of the things that they were very well known for is a purple dye that they would make from the, sh uh, the shells of uh, sea snails. Now this art is lost today. Uh, people don't know how to do it anymore. Uh, but they were well known for these purple dyes and purple cloth. The Greeks actually called them Phoenicians uh, because of this, which uh, Phoenicia, the Phoenicians means purple. So they were known as the people of, of, of purple. They called themselves Kana'ani, which is a Semitic word. It's 
very ident it's very close to the Hebrew word for Canaanite. So they actually refer to themselves as Canaanites. Uh, and they use the Hebrew word for Canaanite as, as, as what they call themselves. And uh, the Hebrews, uh, the Jewish people, the Israelites, they would call them Canaanites as well. And actually, these particular Canaanites became so well known for trade throughout the early world that the actual name Canaanite become, became uh, like a secondary word to mean merchant or trader. And we'll actually see that throughout the Bible. And, and you know, that, that information is, is very interesting because it brings certain things to light. So like if we look at Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 21, and this is how Zechariah ends, by the way. It says, Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them, and see it therein. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. And I would look at that sometimes, and I would wonder, uh, so Canaanites can't be in the house of the Lord? You know, what, what is that all about? But when you look at how Canaanite also meant trader, you can, or, or merchant, you can look in the the Hebrew the Hebrew word for this is kanaani, and you look that up in the Hebrew dictionary, and one of the meanings right there in front of you is trader or merchant, and it brings new light to this. Uh, so it's not saying that you will no longer see a Canaanite in the house of the Lord. Uh, you can look at this as there will no longer be merchants and traders in the house of the Lord. And that brings something to, 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 to your memory, if you think about it, if you think to the, the New Testament, and you look at the Gospel, and you think about the story of Christ as he purges the temple, you know, who was he chasing out of the temple? Uh, he wasn't out there chasing out Canaanites, per se. He was chasing out the moneylenders and the traders and the merchants, people that were selling to use the temple of God uh, as a way of, of making money instead of as a place of worship. And that was what the Lord found detestable. So we can also look at this as a prophecy that Christ fulfilled as, as well, as we look at the word Canaanite, meaning a merchant or trader. Um, we also see the Hittites. Uh, now the, in cuneiform, which is the Sumerian, dia, uh, the Sumerian writing style, uh, they were called the Kate. Uh, later on, Kate ended up being preserved throughout history and to, to a, a word that we more that we understand better is, is Cathay. And the people of Cathay were oriental in, 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 in identity. Um, later on, so the Hittites were most likely an oriental people. Um, and the people of Cathay, they were, they were one of the early descendants of the Chinese uh, people who later on dispersed to a variety of other oriental nations. So the last son from Canaan uh, that we're going to talk about is uh, Sin or Sinai. Uh, he is the father of the Sinites. And this is where the Chinese came from. Uh, even to this day, the study of Chinese culture is called Sinology. Uh, the ancient Chinese were called Sine by the Assyrians. Uh, also the Greeks, uh, Ptolemy, a Greek astronomer, called the, the land of China, the land of Sinem or Sine uh, as well. Uh, they're actually even mentioned in Isaiah. So some people think that uh, China is not mentioned in the Bible. Uh, well, actually they are referred to in Isaiah. As we see in Isaiah 49, 12, Behold, these shall come from afar, and lo, these from the north, and these from the west. Then it has a semicolon, and it says, And these from the land of Sinem. So it's talking about... Uh, large groups of people coming down at the later days uh, when God is going to start bringing people together um, in his name and he's talking about we're going to have these from the north we're going to have these from the west and then it says and then we're going to have these from the land of Sinim those are three separate uh, areas so we know that the land of Sinim was not from the west they weren't from the north uh, so they were most likely from the east and since we see the land of Sinim uh, being referenced by other uh, people groups as referring to the land of China, we actually 
can see that Isaiah is referring to the land of China when he's talking about the land of Sinim. Now when we get to Japheth, uh, Japheth actually has the smallest family tree that's mentioned in the Table of Nations in Genesis chapter 10. Uh, but we have the prophecy of Noah saying that God would enlarge Japheth. And when you see the, 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 the nations that come out of Japheth, uh, we see that that prophecy came true. Uh, Japheth has spread all throughout the world. And, and, and we're going to kind of go into some of that uh, right now as, as we read some of these nations that, that came from Japheth. Um, so let's go let's talk about Gomer first. Uh, from the Gomer, we have the Celts, the Irish, the Scottish, the Welsh, the Britons, and the French. Uh, he had a son. He had a few sons. One was named Ashkenaz, and Ashkenaz is where the Germans came from. Uh, actually, the, the, the word Ashkenaz is, is probably one of the more well-preserved uh, of, the, of the names throughout these genealogies. Uh, still used to this day. Uh, if you think of a, a Jew that's of German descent, uh, the term is Ashkenazi Jew. So the term Ashkenazi still refers to people groups to this very day, and it came from uh, the son of Gomer, who founded Germany. Um, another son was Rifath, and that's where the people of Turkey uh, come from. Uh, to Garma, we have Armenia and Georgia. Uh, Magog, uh, you might have heard about Magog in some prophecies. Uh, from him came the Goths, the Germans, the Finns, the Russians, the Estonians, Siberians, Yugoslavians, Croatians, Bosnians, Serbians, Slovenians, Slovakians, Bulgarians, Hungarians, Poles, Czechs, Scottish, and Irish. Uh, from Madai, we have the Medes, the Mitanni, also part of the Persians. We saw how the, the Medes and the Persians, uh, they, they mix together, and so they both make up Iran. And, and then we have the Kurds, Aryans, Archimeans, Manians, Caspians, Turks, and East Indians. Uh, another interesting fact about the, the Medes, um, when the northern kingdom of Israel was taken over by the Assyrians, they were sent into the city of the Medes. So the northern kingdom, those ten tribes of Israel, likely intermingled along with the Medes. And they very likely could be uh, a part of many of these nations that the Medes came to, to settle. Uh, so let's move on to Javan. From Javan, the son of Japheth, we have the Greeks, the Spartans, the Britons, the Archaeans, the Macedonians, the Cretans, the Latins, the Romans, the Italians, and the Spanish. Uh, he has some sons as well. Elisha is known for founding Cyprus or also known as Thessalia. Tarshish is, is linked with Carthage. Uh, Ketim is specifically linked with Larnaca in Cyprus. Uh, Dodanim is uh, known to have founded the Isle of Rhodes. Uh, for Javed's son Tubal, he founded, uh, his people are the descendants of the Albanians and the Georgians today. Uh, Meshek, from him came the Phrygians, some of the Georgians uh, that are in, in Georgia today. We also have the Moscovites. Uh, Moscovites are the ones that founded Moscow, the capital city of Russia. So we see a large portion of the people, of the descendants of Meshek, uh, mingling in with the Russian society of, of today, along with the children of Magog. Uh, the Latvians, the Lithuanians, and the Romanians all come from Meshek. Uh, then we have Tyrus. From Tyrus we get Thrace, uh, modern-day Bulgaria. Uh, Scandinavia, also the Vikings came from Tyrus. The Swedes, the Norwegians, the Danes, and the Icelandic. As we learn you know, a little bit more about these societies, we can start kind of reading you know, they can help us out with some of the verses that we read in the Bible, having a better understanding of, of the people groups as, as they broke up and, and understanding of the nations that derive from these people. Uh, like the chapter in Ezekiel 38, 2 through 6, we see, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him. 
and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I will turn thee back, and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling the swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with the shield and helmet. Gomer and all his bands, the house of Tagarma of the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. So we can kind of look at this and, and get a better understanding of what these nations are, who they are now, uh, so we can kind of get a better understanding and see world development set as prophecy starts becoming fulfilled. Uh, but having a better understanding of the people groups uh, that came throughout the, the, the world is going to help us better understand uh, our, our study, especially as we start seeing how God has been available to all mankind through the generations of mankind to kind of see these people groups and who was where. Uh, when did the Greeks start uh, getting involved more? When did the Persians start getting involved more? What, what, what happened with Babylon? We'll start to be able to see how God affects each of these groups in, in miraculous ways to, to bring us to Him. All right, so that concludes our study today. I'll see you all next week. Thank you.